I posted this Michael Myers design on Instagram and a lot of you really liked it and I got some messages saying, hey Charlie, you should do a design breakdown video. So that's what I'm doing today. And you know, it's almost Halloween. So I figured this is a great time to do it. And I know some of you really like watching this. So with that being said, um, with this design, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I went about creating it. And I did use AI for this. The typical person would just go on Google and look for Michael Myers photos and use those in their art. But I think it's interesting to use AI. I will say though that Michael Myers looks about 90 years old now thanks to Mid Journey. But other than that, I'm happy with it though. And um, yeah, we're gonna break it down right now. But before we do, I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor over at Applique. There are so many print on demand companies out there, so I get it. It's hard to choose which one is best for you, but I use three different categories to decide if I wanna choose a platform. The price, is there a monthly subscription? The print quality, is it good, is it not good? Simple, right? And their catalog, what kind of products do they have to offer that I can print on? And I can even add a fourth one if you wanted to, and that's customization. How far can I go to customize the garment that I'm trying to print on? That's where Applique is a clear winner if you think about it, because they don't have a subscription model, they have amazing print quality, they do private labeling so you can completely customize your garment to make it your own and make it feel like a brand that somebody wants to buy. And remember, there's no subscription, so you're not losing anything by trying Applique. Link is in the description below. Let's get back to the video. I wanted to start the video off by showing you guys my mid-journey prompt to get the Michael Myers that I have now. Now, he does look a lot older, I will say. It's not exact, but I was pretty impressed by this uh, rendition of Michael Myers, so I ended up using Sometimes it. Sometimes it only takes one image to sort of shape the entire design, and that's kind of what this one did for me. It shaped how I was going to kind of build the design out. Now, the first thing I had to do was bring it into Photoshop and separate the background from the subject. And then it was basically just all about duplicating Michael Myers a bunch of times to flip him horizontally to basically fill out the composition more. There was some flames that were kind of not there on the right side of Michael Myers' body, and I wanted that to be a little bit more full for the house that I was going to put in front. And this is all stuff that I kind of came up with on the spot. I didn't plan this composition at all, honestly. Like, I did have Pinterest pulled up, but I didn't reference anything. I didn't use anything as a direct reference. It was mainly just my brain kind of doing whatever it wanted to do, and I didn't stop it. And um, that's kind of what you see me working on is, just exploring my thoughts in real time. And it was a beautiful thing, you know, and sometimes when you let that happen, you can come up with some really nice things. Next, I did use Mid Journey to render this house. It's not the exact Michael Myers house, but it worked and I really liked the vibe of it. To remove the subject from the house, I just used Generative Fill, which is built into Photoshop now. It's pretty powerful. And I think I just typed in remove or whatever and it worked beautifully and it looked pretty natural. So I was pretty happy with that. And then I used select subject cloud in order to get a really nice selection of the house. Now, if you use cloud, you get better results than just using device. Um, it basically uses the cloud on the server side to give you much higher quality results. And I've tried both and I will say cloud tends to be a little better. You will have to kind of clean it up using the layer mask. But other than that, it works probably 97, 98% of the time that I use it. So it's pretty awesome. And it saves me hours of uh, cutting out subjects from their background. And um, I would definitely try it out. It doesn't work for everybody, but it works for me. So I use it. And uh, Michael Myers, you know, was already separated from the background because I kind of did that at the beginning to prepare for my overall composition. So it was pretty easy to just place Michael Myers behind the house and have the house kind of front and center. What can help you guys a lot, and this is kind of a big tip for you guys, is don't look at an image as a flat image. Look at it as a three-dimensional image. Pretend like you're living in the image in real time, right? Nothing in real life is flat, at least not how we perceive it. Now that I have that house on a separate layer, it goes into what I was just saying. Now I can add a hue and saturation layer to the house and cast the light from the flames onto the house separately without affecting any part of the image but the house, which is exactly what we want. And this gives me full control over the hue of the color that I'm casting onto the house. And obviously in this situation, you wanna match the colors of the flames, which are more of like that yellow, orange, red color. The goal is to make everything look like it belongs in the same composition. The last thing you want is to have something standing out like a sore thumb and ruining your entire design. Now I compare this to movies. When you have a movie that is like heavily reliant on CGI, and the CGI is just done very poorly, it's going to take your attention away from the story and you're going to focus on the bad CGI and it's gonna ruin the entire movie, right? That's kinda how you wanna approach your designs. You don't want something standing out so bad 
that it just ruins your entire composition and nobody likes your design. So I think that's what separates amateur designers from more, um, let's say veteran designers, because they understand that concept. About 60% of my time on this composition went to highlights because they're so important for the entire composition to look right. And if I'm being honest with you, I still think I could have done a lot better, but that's a different story for another day. Moving on to the typography, I'm using the classic ITC Serif Gothic standard. If you don't know about this font, it was used on a lot of the uh, movie covers for Halloween. I know that the recent Halloween films, like the last three, didn't use this font, but they should have, in my opinion. It's just one of those, like I said, classic fonts that you kind of have to associate with Michael Myers, but nonetheless, I'm just messing with the kerning a little bit. Pro tip, if you're going to add a stroke to text in Photoshop, make sure you right click on the text layer and convert it to a shape. And then you could just go to the shape icon and add a stroke on the very top and it's going to give you sharp edges. And most people don't even know about this. So it's definitely a really good thing to know. And it's going to set you apart from other designers that design in Photoshop. I created a duplicate copy of my text without the stroke. So I can do things like add this dissolve brush on the inside with an inner glow or inner stroke, whatever you wanna use. And this gives you that nice border with that texture. And you know, when I apply my style bender to this, it's just going to look really, really cool. I do end up changing the stroke color because I didn't like that it was orange. To me, it didn't match my overall composition. Although now that I look at it, I kind of think it would have been okay, but you know, that's, we can maybe try it next time. And one thing that I really love about Halloween or Michael Myers is the quotes in the movies. And I was going online trying to find some of the most popular ones. And as you can see, I'm kind of messing with them. I settled on evil is real because it was short and I liked the way it looked on the top right. And I used the smudge tool to sort of fade it into the background a little bit. I wanted the text to look like it was sort of taking on the characteristics of the flames in the back and I like the way this turned out. It's really nice. I did end up duplicating the layer in case I needed to make any more changes or if I messed up. Once I was finished with my composition, I used my style bender, style number one. I also tried style number two, which both are really good, but I ended up really liking style number one. And the template is self-explanatory. I have a tutorial on my website when you buy it. So if you guys do purchase it, there is a tutorial with it so you guys can learn how to use it. And it's just a super powerful tool. It completely transforms your art. What took me 15 years to figure out that template does in five seconds. So it's really just, it's kind of incredible to me. And if you would have told me that this existed back then when I first started, I would have probably gone a lot further by now. But uh, anyway, you guys have access to the power of Stylebender and you guys can get it on my website at charliepingus.com. Now let's take a look at the final using Stylebender. And man, I am so happy with the way this turned out. And I hope you guys have an amazing Halloween. And don't forget, now is the perfect time to learn merch design, learn a new skill before you go into a new year by signing up to merchdesignacademy.com. Link in the description below.